Can you make a minigun out of a spud gun with a feedback loop, please? Well, let's say you want a repeating spud gun. Normally, what you would do is build up a small rotating mechanism with a bunch of sensors, a bunch of spud guns on it, spin the whole thing, and get essentially a gas gun. Now, what if you wanted to build a repeater without using any moving parts? Well, for that, you will need a feedback loop. By definition, a feedback loop is a process in which the outputs of the system are circled back and used as inputs. As an example, here is one. Okay, enough jump scares. And for actual spot guns, here's how you build a one of them. So mount a spot gun on a pedestal, put a sensor in front of it, then put an OR gate somewhere on the pedestal or with a button. And just for the good measure, let's put the timer in here so we can experiment a little bit. Now sensor into timer, into the OR gate, button into the OR gate, OR gate into the spot gun. Press a button, it shoots, and you can see the timer flashes, but it doesn't feedback. Now let's bring it up to a second delay. Yep. Again, the output, which is the sensor, is looped back to use as an input. Let's speed it up some. Half a second. Quarter of a second. Still works the same, just considerably faster. How about a tenth of a second? Anything quicker? And it's actually too quick. The spot gun doesn't have time to reload. Well, one is fine, but what if you want more? That's not a problem. Simply expand out the pedestal. And personally, I've noticed three works the best, so each launcher gets its own sensor, then gets an OR gate, fine, I'll even flip them right side up, and gets an OR gate, and one button, then each output gets connected to the next input, so each sensor goes to the OR gate of the next launcher, and lastly, the final sensor goes into the first OR gate. The OR gates are then wired to their respective launchers, as such. And then the button goes into the first gate. Now, if everything is done correctly, press the button. And off it goes. As you can see by the flash and OR gates, it cycles from right to left. To stop the sequence, simply hold the button for long enough, and there you go. The system resets itself. If you want to use four launchers, well, you absolutely can. Mount them next to each other, put the sensors sort of on the outside, and when you press a button, Oh, what did I screw up? And when you press the button, press the button, and off it goes. Alright, here we are in survival, and just for the heck of it, I've built three different systems. One is the default spinning Gatler. The other one is the feedback loop repeater. And the third one, in yellow, is the regular, more common, I should say, a two-gun nor and or loop, where it basically flips 
from one to the other, from one to the other, and so on. Anyway, they are all filled up to full stack potatoes, and the spinner is powered by an electric engine set to eight. From a little bit of testing, it seems like eight is the most uh, reliable speed for this size. Without further ado, let's see which one runs out first. In three, two, one. Looks like feedback loop is in the lead. And just like that, feedback loop is out. Gatlin is out next. And the, and the three gate repeater is the last. Use that information as you will because sometimes you don't want to just go through, what is it? 250 potatoes in all of about five seconds. Anyway, hope you learned something, and, well, best of luck in your future builds. Oh, and to power everything, I have built a real simple and and nor. Now, wouldn't really call it a loop, it's more of a pulse generator. And what that does is when you flip a switch, it switches one of the end gates to on as you would expect from a switch, and the other end gate gets a quick pulse because it takes a logic and scrap mechanic runs on 40 cycles a second, therefore it takes 1 40th of a second for the NOR gate to realize that hey, you've got a signal coming to it, and then to turn off. But that quick flash is just enough to kickstart the feedback loop 